when darkness deepens, standing the earth's breast, and man's corporeal mind is the only lamp, as a thief in the night shall be the cover for the one who steps unseen into his house. A voice in her shall speak, the soul obey. A power into mind's inner chamber feel, a charm and sweetness open life's closed doors, and beauty conquer the resisting world. The truth light captures nature by surprise, a stealth of God tempt the heart to bliss, and earth grow unexpectedly divine. In matter shall be lit the spirit's glow, in body and body kindled the sacred birth, night shall awake to the anthem of the stars. The days become a happy pilgrim march. Our will, a force of the eternal power, and sought the rays of a spiritual sun. A few shall see what none yet understand. God shall grow up while the wise men talk and sleep. For man shall not know the coming till it's out, and belief shall be not till the work is done. Tuning his lips to earthly sound he spoke, and something now of the deep sense of faith weighted the fragile hints of mortal speech. His forehead shone with the vision solemnized, turned to a tablet of supernal thoughts, as if characters of an unwritten tongue had left in its breath the inscription of the gods. There in that light, time toiled, his unseen works Detected the broad flung fasting schemes unfinished which his young flight and rose were mapped already in the world wide book. Was then the sun a dream because there is night? Hidden in a mortal's heart eternal lips, he lives secret in the chamber of thy soul. A light shines there, not pain, nor grief can cross. A darkness stands between thyself and him. Thou canst not hear or feel the marvelous guest. Thou canst not see the beatific sun. O Queen, thy thought is the light of the ignorance. Its billion curtain hides from thee God's face. It illumines a world born from the inconscience, but hides the mortal's meaning in the world. The mind's light hides from thee the eternal thought. Thy heart's hopes hide from thee the eternal sweet. Earth's joys shut from thee the immortal's bliss. Then rose the need of a dark intruding God. The world's dead teacher, the creator, pain. Where ignorance is, there suffering too must come. Thy grief is the cry of darkness to the light. <clears throat> pain was the first born of the inconscience which was thy body's dumb original base. Already slept there pain's subconscious shape. A shadow 
and the shadowy tenebras room. The light shall move, it waits to wake and be. In one call of the joy came forth the dreadful power. In life's breast it was born, hiding its twig. By pain, but pain came first, then only joy could be. Pain ploughed the first hard ground of the world grouse. By pain a spirit started from the clod. By pain life struck stirred in the subliminal deep. In turn submerged, hidden in matter stands, awoke to itself the dreamer, sleeping mind. It made a visible realm out of its dreams. It drew its shapes from the subconscious depths. Then turned to look upon the world it had made. By pain and joy, the bright and tenebrous strings, the inanimate world perceived its sensual soul. Else had the inconscient never suffered change. Pain is the hammer of the gods to break a dread resistance in the mortal's heart, his slow inertia as of living stone. If the heart were not forced to want and weep, his soul would have lain down content at ease and never thought to exceed the human star and never learn to climb towards the sun. This earth is full of labor, packed with pain, throes of an endless birth, coerce her skill. The centuries end, the ages vainly pass, and yet the Godhead in her is not born. The ancient mother faces all with joy, calls for the ardent pang, the grandiose thrill for the pain and labor of creation comes. This earth is full of the anguish of the gods. Ever they travail driven by titans gold and strive to work out the eternal will and shape the life divine in mortal forms. His will must be worked out in human breast amid against the evil that rises from the gods, against man's ignorance and his obstinate strength against the deep folly of his human mind, against the blind reluctance of his human heart. The spirit is doomed to pain till man is free. There is a clamor of battle, a tramp, a march, a cry arises from the morning sea, a desperate laughter under the blows of death, a doom of blood and sweat and toil and tear. Men die that man may live and God be born. An awful silence, what a tragic time. Pain is the hand of nature sculpturing men to greatness. An inspired labor chisels with heavenly cruelty and unwilling mood. Implacable in the passion of their will, lifting the hammers of titanic toil, the demi of the universe work. They say to giant strokes their own. Their sons are marked with enormous stamp of fate. Although the shaping God's tremendous touch is torture, unbearable to mortal nerves, the fiery spirit grows in strength within and feels a joy in every tide and time. He who would save himself lives there and calm. He who would save the race must share its pain. This he shall know who obeys the grandiose earth, the great who came to save this suffering world and rescue out of time, shadow and the law, must pass beneath the yoke of grief and pain. They are caught by the wheel they had hoped to break. On their shoulders they must bear man's load of faith. Heaven's riches they bring. They are suffering, count the price, or they pay the gift of knowledge with their lives. The Son of God, born as the Son of Man, has drunk the bitter cup, owned Godhead's debt, the debt the eternal owes 
to fallen kind. His will has bound to death and struggling life that yearns in pain for rest and endless peace. Now is the death day. White, the original score. The eternal suffers in human form. He has signed salvation's testament with his blood. He has opened the doors of his undying peace. The deity compensates the creature's claim. The creator bears the law of pain and death. A retribution smites the incarnate God. His love has paid the price for it. His love has paid the mortal's road to heaven. He has given his life and life to balance here the dark account of mortal's ignorance. It is finished. The great mysterious sacrifice offered by God's martyred body for the world, Jackson and Calvary, are his law. He carries his cross on which man's soul is named. His cord is the curse of the crowd. Insult and jeer are the right and right acknowledgement. Two thieves slain with him mock his mighty death. He has trod with bleeding brow the Savior's way. He who has found his identity with God pays with his body's death his soul's vast life. His knowledge immortal triumphs by his death. Hewn, quartered on the scaffold as he falls, his crucified voice proclaims, I, I am God. Yes, all is God. Peace back heaven's death of God. The seed of Godhead sleeps in mortal hearts. The flower of Godhead grows on the world tree. All shall discover God in self and things. But when God's messenger comes to help the world and lead the soul of earth to higher things, he too must carry the yoke he came to unloose. He too must bear the pang that he is in. Except and unafflicted by our faith, how shall he cure the ills he never felt? He covers the world's agony with his calm. But though to the outward eye, no sign appears, and peace is given to our torn human heart. The struggle is there, and paid the unseen price. The fire, the strife, the wrestle are lean. He carries the suffering world in his own breast. It sinks way on his thoughts. It slips, it sinks. Earth's ancient load lies heavy on his soul. Night and its power beleaguer his tardy steps. The titan at first as his clutch he bears. His mark is a battle and a privilege. Life's evil smite. He is stricken with the world's pain. A million wounds gave in his secret heart. He sojourns sleepless through an unending night. Antagonist forces crowd across his path. A siege, a combat is his inner life. Even worse, maybe the cause. There are the pain. His large identity and all harboring love shall bring the cosmic anguish into his depth. The sorrow of all living things shall come and knock at his doors and live within his house. A dreadful cause of sympathy can tie all suffering into his simple grief, single grief and make all agony in all the world his own. He meets an ancient adversary force, he is lashed with whips that tear the world's own heart. The weeping of the centuries visits his eyes. He wears the blood blue fiery scent of star. The poison of the world has stained his throat. In the marketplace of matter's capital, amid the sufferings of the affairs called life, he is tied to the stake of a perennial fire. He burns on an unseen original world that matter may be turned to spirit stuff. He is the victim of his own sacrifice. The mortal bound, the immortal bound to earth mortality, appearing and perishing on the roads of time, creates God's moments by eternity speaks. He dies that the world may be newborn and
এটা হচ্ছে চিরবিদ্যুৎ যুগ